Beautiful. Thank you. Okay, oh, oh, current oh, figures. Oh, Listen, this one is fun because now we get to start messing around with things being congruent, which means that they have equal stuff going on, which means then I can solve for one when I know something from the other. Okay. Third angle theorem. If two angles in a triangle are congruent to those of another triangle, then the triangle's third angles are congruent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're going to have to use that in a proof. Yeah, because there was a proof in the exam model. Oh, there is, and we're going to do it. Three proofs. Okay. So if angle A and is congruent to angle D, and angle B is congruent to angle E, then C is congruent to F. Okay, so if I know what A is and I know what E is, then I can figure out what F or C are. Yeah. Can I? Know? <laughs> yeah. Yes. What? Um, I was told that you need to end some of these paths. Oh. Yep. We get to 110. What? Don't you add um, D, which is 50, and C, which is 20, which is 20, which is 50. Okay, you think D is 50. Why is D 50? Because A and D are congruent. Okay, so this is 50. And you think B is what? Why? Okay, and here I have this triangle, yes. I have this triangle, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm trying to figure out what this whole angle is, yes? Okay. Oh, what that angle is. Yeah. Can I explain? Well, yes. Okay, no. so what I did is I took the triangle BC, I'm going to put E in there because I'm making two points. Okay. And since uh, angle A and angle D are congruent, that means angle C and angle B are congruent. So you get uh, 40 there, and the triangle has to equal to 180. So you do 180 minus 40, which gives you 140. And then there's vertical angles B, D, and A, C, which means to make it uh, supplementary, it'd be uh, C, E, D would be angle, or would be the measure of 40, and then 40 plus 50 is 90. So then angle C would have to equal 90. I get it. I get it. Okay. That's a that's a good way to do it. There's more. There's another way. What's another way? Mm -hmm. Chloe? Um, maybe add 50 and 20. Add 50, 20, and, and what else? Subtract it from 180. Mm. 50, 20, 20. 50, 20, 20. Subtract it from 180. Which is 90. Okay. Oh, and that's how you can get that other section there. And then 90 and 20, right? Or uh, 110. Well, it doesn't take that much. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Either of those ways work. Does that make sense? Okay. So pretty easy, but you have to show me that in math. You get what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. You have to give me equations, solve it for me, show me what's going on. Okay. Okay. Last thing. Prove triangles are congruent. Prove that X, Y, Z is congruent to B, A, Z. So you have this. Y, Z here, yes? Okay. And you have B, A, Z here. I want you to prove that those are congruent, so we need to make a proof. Wonderful. What can I go with first? Yes? Uh, the givens, B, angle A, Z is congruent to Y, Z, and you just do it with all the angles. Angle A, Z is congruent to Y, Z. And you do that with all the angles. Um, why are you saying AZ and YZ are congruent? That's not a given. 
But like they have those three lines showing that they are congruent. Uh, those are sides. And then wouldn't that make it congruent? Just because the sides are congruent doesn't mean the angles are congruent. But if the whole, the triangle is congruent, the other ones are. Yeah, but you don't know enough terminology yet to know what that's called. So use the terminology. Is it AAS, angle, angle, sign? No. A-Y-R. Thank you. Yes, Mark. Okay, angle A and angle Y are congruent. What else? Yes. Uh, y, Z, and A, Z are congruent. I like the same one. Y, Z, and A, Z. Segment Y, Z is congruent to segment A, Z. Given. Okay, what else? Y, Z, and A, B are also. Y, Z, and what? A, B. Or uh, Y, X, sorry. Y, X, and A, B. Yeah. And then Y, X is congruent to A, B. Z, B, and X, Z. Z, B. Z, B is congruent to X. Z, X. Order matters. Okay. Okay, okay what else? I still haven't proven that those triangles are congruent. Table. I've proven that there are three sides that are congruent and that there's one angle that's congruent. So I need two more angles to prove that those triangles are congruent. Yes. Um, Courtney. I don't know what to call them, but the inside two angles are congruent. Well, vertical. Okay, good. You would name it like X, Z, Y, B, okay. Z, A. X, Z, Y, and B, Z, A. Okay. Angle X. Uh, Z, Y is congruent to angle B, Z, A because of vertical angles. Good. Okay, what else? I have two angles, I have three sides. I need another angle. What? Angle X is congruent to angle B. But why? are congruent to another angle, and I know all the sides are congruent to another side, okay, then we're going to use a term called corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, like, what? <laughs> oh, I remember this, I saw the letters, uh -huh. I memorized the letters. So, the two triangles are congruent because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Because, because the same part of the congruent no, triangles like, are congruent, they're, yes. therefore the triangles are congruent. Correct. Okay. Can you just put their control? Nope. Corresponding parts. So C P of A congruent A triangles A are A congruent. C C P O C T A C. Oh, C O P what? Yeah, co corresponding parts C of congruent. Yeah. C you can do C P O A P T if you want to, or C P O C. CPOC. But yes, you will be using that a lot because you'll get to the final solution and you'll say corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, that's going to be a major thing. This is literally 5.2. Is it all proofs? There will be several. I forgot how much I love geometry. What? Trust me, I just love it. 
Are you in calculus, Ashley? No. Oh. But you, you took. 